Okay, so today we're going to just look, have a look at sutures and the different types of stitches that we can get. Some are going to be absorbable, like this stitch called vicral, and when you look at a stitch and pick it up, the first thing to do, as well as looking at the material that's used and the size of the stitch, the bigger the number, the smaller the stitch. So a 1-0 would be an even bigger stitch, but an 11-0 will be a very tiny stitch that we might use for microsurgery is also to look at the shape of the needle in this case it's a semicircle but also in this little picture it tells you what the actual um, shape of the point is at the end and the shape of the whole needle itself if you compare this one for example which is vital to this stitch which is silk and it's a stitch we sometimes use for sewing in drains and things like that, you can see the needle is still a semicircle, but the cross section of the needle is a triangle. And this is a cutting needle, and it's a needle that will cut on all three surfaces. So this is a great needle to use on skin, any hard surface that you're trying to get through, but you wouldn't want to use this tissue, this kind of needle on very soft tissues. If you're suturing an artery or a vein or bowel, you don't want something that's going to cut through and then pull through and drag your stitch apart. So let's have a look at the stitch and let's have a look at how you actually choose and mount the needle. You need to choose your needle holder that's going to be the right size. And we have a variety of needle holders that we can use. Most of them are based on a ratchet system and this is a little ratchet here. So as you put your thumb in and you hold it there you'll see that the thumb is actually offset from the needle. They're not the needle holder. The two are not parallel. You might just be able to see that so that you can always work out which way around to put it. Slightly difficult if you're left-handed because you have to turn things around a little bit. But as a right-hander, it's easy for me. So you can ratchet it, open it up again, and you need to get the right size needle holder for the right size stitch. Otherwise, if you have too small a needle holder and you put on a big stitch, then what you can do is actually damage the needle holder itself. So we've got even bigger ones, such as this one here, for a larger stitch, and some of them even have the handles offset that make them even more comfortable. When you mount your stitch, you take it out of the packet, and this, the whole thing will be done in a sterile environment with a nurse and, or a, a, a colleague. And what you then do is you actually hold the stitch in the right place. And to mount it, you take the stitch out of the packet and you have a look on the needle itself. And you might be able to just see that the, the point to actually put the needle holder is two-thirds the way down the stitch, one-third away from the end. So it's a two-third, one-third ratio. When you do that, it means that you've actually got the stitch and the, in the needle holder in the right place for your wrist and your fingers to actually do the work. If you put the needle too near the tip, uh, the needle holder too near the tip of the needle, you'll blunt it. And it means it won't be useful for the next pass. That's really important, not just for suturing skin, but particularly for suturing nerves and blood vessels. Because if you damage that part and it becomes blunt, you're much more likely to splay the end and tear the structure. So let's see how we actually use it. If we take this out of the packet, the whole thing will come out in a completely straight line without kinking, without turning, without curling and we've got the length of stitch that we want. This is a really massive stitch that we have here. And so you can see that my action would be that movement happening without any shake or tremor because I'm using my finger to support the needle holder at that point. You can hold the needle holder in different ways and sometimes if you haven't got much room you might have to hold it like this and turn it round. You can even do it backhand and if you're doing it backhand you turn the needle round so it's in this position to allow you to then go backhand. But most people, if they hand in the more comfortable, will come in a forehand direction, just as you would with a tennis serve. So let's put everything back, and we'll go on to our wound that we've got here.